Welcome back to the show, everybody. History is being made today. Ripple just announced that they're launching a stable coin. <laughs> yeah, get some. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back. Yeah, you know where it's from. Welcome back, Cotter. That's where it's from. But you know what? We got breaking news today, ladies and gentlemen. Ripple just announced that they're going to launch their own stable coin. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into all of it. Hang in there. There's so much to talk about today. Well, does that mean that Ripple's a bank? Remember, Monica Long is the president of Ripple. A lot of banks have presidents. You know, how does this... How do we interpret all of this? Are they becoming the Federal Reserve 2.0? <laughs> Look, we got, like I said, we got a lot to talk about right now. $2.65 trillion market cap for crypto. The market's up 1.3. 66,800 plus for Bitcoin. 3,300 plus for Ethereum. 106.4 billion market cap for Tether. XRP's at the number seven spot at 60 cents. We're up 4.7 on the 24 hour. But look at this. The news just dropped minutes ago. We're up 5.9% in the last hour. So even though we're off by 1.9 on the seven day, this may be a very interesting day for XRP. Now jumping to 61 cents right now. You can see the market is moving on this news. Look at everything moving here, ladies and gentlemen. This could be a breakout day for us. It Maybe it isn't, but I tell you what, I think this is extremely good news. We are going to get into this, but let me tell you something. As soon as I saw that article drop this morning, Yes, that's right. Big Daddy went and got himself some Ripple this morning. Come on in. you damn right I did. And you can get it too, but I'm going to tell you something. You know news like this today is going to send this crazy. I bet they could sell out a Ripple on Link2 today if you're not careful. Okay? Again, I don't know whether this means Ripple's becoming a bank or whether Ripple's going to end up becoming the Federal Reserve 2.0, which I have believed for a long time. But I'll tell you this, what we do know is, what happened when Tether gets printed for Bitcoin? It goes up. It was the on and off ramp to Bitcoin in the early days. How could people buy it, right? Then what happened when they launched ERC-20 USDC tokens on the Ethereum network? Boom. Now it is time. Ripple is launching a stable coin on the XRP ledger. Oh my goodness gracious. All right, look, we got a lot to go over, but let me just quickly move through this. First of all, let me tell you something. This is why I've been telling you that this truly is one of the most important conferences you could ever attend in your life because of the moment that we're currently in. And I know that if you're hearing my voice, you get it. That's not hype. That's not a sales pitch. That's the truth. And I hope that your life is in a position that you can come be at this conference because we are going to hear from everybody, from Congressman Wiley Nickel, who is a House of Representative, moderate Democrat, and a crypto advocate, the legal crew in this community that is bar none, unbelievable, and all the incredible sponsors like Ripple, Uphold, iTrust, Ballet.com, Pierces, you name it. They're here. They're coming. This is amazing, ladies and gentlemen. And let me tell you something. You know, this is the kind of stuff that, look, you, David Schwartz is going to be on stage. You don't think David Schwartz is going to have information that he could share with you about launching a stable coin and what we could learn on that day? Please get your ticket. Please get your ticket. Oh, my goodness gracious. Brad Garlinghouse said, if you want to impact the most people and really put a dent in the universe, how do we reach 99%, not 1%? And then he talks about connecting the repositories, just like I've played for you before. This isn't about really trying to make money off the speculative side of retail. This is about connecting major institutions and governments. And that's what they've been doing. And you know that there's proof of it because this is when we heard the announcement, James Wallace uh, Ripple was selected by the country Georgia for their CBDC pilot project, hugely exciting. Then this came out just yesterday. Shout out to Michael Branch for this one. Give him a follow. Central banks unite for tokenization to revamp the money system. The central bank of central banks, the BIS. 
They go into Project Agora, unites seven central banks for digital money makeover. Agora smart contracts aim to slash global payment costs. Tokenization project to streamline KYC AML boosting efficiency. It does not go into what network or protocols are being used or not, but we know they said smart contracts. So we have to wonder, is Ethereum involved in that particular part of the, the transaction there? We don't know. Is XRP Ledger involved? We don't know. But we do know is that Embridge, and I've played it for you before, uh, Embridge is certainly uh, one of the pilots that's being tested by the BIS, and XRP Ledger is certainly one of those models of Embridge, if not the model of Embridge. So you have to wonder how closely connected are Embridge and Project Agora. I don't know, but, you know, this is pretty remarkable. Listen to this as a refresher from James Wallace at Ripple. Right, it is. It, we're using the same technology that it's with the XRP ledger. What would the token would be the CBDC, right? So the central bank would actually create their own token, a digital euro, a digital dollar, whatever the, mar the market is. Um, and that becomes the digital asset. As the so that becomes the digital asset. Keep listening. The native um, coin. The native coin, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, where, where XRP could come into play potentially is when you're looking at cross border. CBDC. So when you have a digital dollar and you have a digital, you know, real, you know, or digital digital pound, you, know, you obviously need to have some some way to interact cross border. Yeah. So I think the, the uh, BIS call this a multi CBDC model. Um, the, the, uh, one of the ideas is you use a sort of a neutral bridge currency to go from one to the other, similar to the model I explained earlier, where uh, with our on demand liquidity. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but the, the yeah, but the core offering really is is not XR, There's no XRP involved. It's it's the native token is the CBDC. And what is a stable coin? A privately issued digital dollar, right? That's what it is. This is super super exciting, ladies and gentlemen. Now let me let me just get to it here because we got the article. All right, here it is. Uh, Coindesk drops it. Ripple plans to release a stable coin pegged to the U.S. dollar. Uh, th this is amazing, ladies and gentlemen. Prepare for phase one of mass adoption. Liquidity, 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 liquidity. The water that grows a network, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we're talking about here. This is massive news. Let's get into this right now. Ripple developer... Behind the XRP ledger, we're talking about David Schwartz, ladies and gentlemen. Stablecoin Frey versus Tether in USDC. <laughs> oh, the token will be 100% backed by U.S. dollar deposits, short-term government treasuries, and other cash equivalents, according to the company. We're going to have to read all of this because it's so important. And I've got something for you after. Ripple, the enterprise-focused blockchain service and creator of XRP Ledger, is introducing its own stablecoin pegged to the price of the U.S. dollar. The stablecoin market is over $150 billion today and is forecasted to exceed $2.8 trillion by just 2028. Ripple said in a statement shared with Coindesk, there's clear demand for stable coins that deliver trust, stability, and utility. The company said the token, which it plans to release later this year, will be 100% backed by U.S. dollar deposits, short-term U.S. government treasuries, and other cash equivalents. The stablecoin will be deployed onto Ripple's institution-focused XRP ledger, along with the Ethereum blockchain to start out. Remember, Pierce's has a bridge between the EVM and XRP ledger as well. <laughs> and with the onset of Ethereum having its recent troubles, you think there's going to be any mass exodus to want to come to the XRP ledger now? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Ripple's announcement comes as stablecoins have proven one of the most popular types of digital assets among crypto traders, free in theory from the price volatility witnessed in large cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum's Ether. Now, we know what a stablecoin is. We don't have to go through all of that. But here we go. Uh, as for why Ripple still battling an enforcement case brought by the U.S. Securities Exchange Commission has decided to jump into the stablecoin game, Schwartz said that the decision in part came down to simple dollars and cents. Part of it is just op opp opportunistic and it's a growing market, he said. You could be a bank that pays no interest. 
There it is. How many times have we got? I got the thumbnails in the video catalog. Ripple becoming a bank. What did he just say? You could be the bank that pays no interest. That seems like a pretty good business opportunity. Damn right it does, David. Schwartz said that the new stablecoin could also help breathe some life into XRP Ledger's decentralized finance ecosystem. Absolutely. Which is decentralized exchange, but relatively low usage relative to other chains. According to Schwartz, transparency historically a key point of scrutiny for stablecoin issuers. And that will be a key focus for Ripple as it rolls out its new token. We're going to have public audits on a monthly basis, hopefully by top tier accounting firm. And we'll disclose more on that later. Uh, We're aiming for a complete transparency. You know, we'll do whatever we need to to address those issues. Beyond the promise of transparency, Schwartz emphasized the potential growth of the stablecoin market currently dominated by USD Tether's token and Circle's USDC serves as a disincentive for Ripple for any other stablecoin provider to act dishonestly. Coinbase, a publicly traded U.S. company exchange, is an investor in Circle. In the early days of Tether, people were expecting it to blow up any day, and they felt like there was a really it was really sketchy, said Schwartz. But now, if you're Tether, it would make sense for you to run off with people. It wouldn't make sense for you to run off with people's money, said Schwartz. Even if it was your plan, you'd wait to do it because the market is only growing. In Ripple's case, we're not trying to squeeze out extra pennies uh, out we don't need to. He says, uh, our balance sheet is rock solid. The CTO said his token will be aimed to uh, pro- primarily at enterprise customers and banking institutions. This means they have liquidity to get on and off the network. There's your ramp right there. Those kind of practical arguments aren't really present uh, because they have to justify their decision to stockholders and regulators and so on. To satisfy the needs of this market segment, Ripple says it's using U.S. banks to hold its reserves and is taking what is terms a compliance first mindset. USDC is currently... uh, the market leader among compliance-oriented stablecoin consumers, but Schwartz said he doesn't see it as a winner-takes-all environment. And I think he's got that right. He says, if we're solid number three and the market grows 12x, that's not a failure scenario. Obviously, we'd like to do better than that, but that's not a failure case. That's a pretty gosh darn good one. Yeah, you better believe it. Go, David. Look, this is exciting. Uh, You know, did Ripple just signal they're becoming not just a bank, but Federal Reserve 2.0? Because I think that's where we're going here. And you guys know I think that. Don't forget that Ripple's already partnered with Uphold and they're already connected with FedNow. Ripple Payments, I'm a Ripple Payments customer and have been directed here to open an account. Well, pretty soon you'll be able to use that that stablecoin and we'll have to see if it's listed on Uphold, one of their partners. But here's the bigger point I want to get to today. It's never been a coincidence at my house why so many people from the United States Treasury have served at Ripple, either in the capacity of a board member or some kind of advisory role. Susan Friedman, head of Ripple policy over in the UK there, came from the Treasury. Then we have Craig Phillips, former Treasury Department counselor, joins Ripple Board of Directors. U.S. Treasury. Because you got to make sure it's done right. Michael S. Barr, former Ripple advisor. Now he came from the Treasury, architected the Dodd-Frank Act, and put together the Financial Stability Oversight Council you hear me talk about so much. And now he's the Vice President of the Federal Reserve Board of Governors. And he's architecting stable coin legislation for which Ripple just announced they're taking part in today. Still think it's a mistake? This is why I call the Treasury officials like Rosie Rios, the 43rd Treasurer of the United States Treasury. Her name's on more money floating around the earth today than any other human ever in life. That's why I refer to the Treasury officials coming coming through the camp of Ripple as a transition team. Because this is as big as we say it is. Otherwise, what in the hell are they doing there? They're making sure it's done right because this is going to be a value protocol that is going to serve the world for hundreds and hundreds of years. Ripple is the HTTP of payments. 
and they just brought on a stablecoin announcement that they're going to launch a stablecoin to create and help facilitate all of those payments. Whether we're talking about settling derivatives or just a regular old uh, 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 transaction that you're sending money across to family members back home. That's what we're talking about. And I find it really, really bullish that with the case still unresolved in its final stage, Ripple feels confident enough to announce that they're going to launch their own stablecoin to the world while this case is still ongoing. And that's why I have said this case is an audit and vetted process just as much as it's a legality issue. I could tell you that. And the announcement of this news today proves that to me, that this has always been what I've believed it to be. And today for me, and it's not financial advice, I just got more validation that we're dancing all over the top of this target. I could tell you that. Oh, I'm super excited. I hope you guys are too. This is going to bring so much liquidity to the network, just like we have seen in other networks. Look at the Bitcoin network and Tether relationship. Look at the USDC and the Ethereum network. And now we got a, a, a coin that's going to be available on Ethereum and the XRP ledger. <laughs> yeah. I am super excited and I hope you are too. Look, uh, that's going to do it for me. I hope you will join us in the Freedom Zone. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. But we're going to talk about that eclipse that's coming up in four days. And I think you might want to know about what's going on in here. I hope you'll join us at digperspectives.com. You could join the Freedom Zone for almost next to nothing, help support the channel and get some great extra content and all of the daily videos with no Google ads. I hope to see you inside. We're getting started right now. Come on in. Oh, 